Tonight, Steve McLaughlin has joined Donald Trump, Stephen Bannon, and Roger Stone, along with hundreds of thousands of others who were banned from the social media powerhouse Twitter. Dan Levy is live with tonight's story. Good evening, Dan. Rachel, good evening. The big difference between Steve McLaughlin and the other names you mentioned is that McLaughlin's banishment from Twitter was short lived and temporary, but it doesn't mean McLaughlin is any less outraged by what happened. It began the other night while Steve McLaughlin was watching TV, and he took exception to something that CNN anchor Brian Stelter said and then tweeted his response. It's hard to put into words just how vapid and stupid you are, probably about as hard as it is for you to come up with a coherent, rational thought, you babbling idiot. I posted something about Brian Stelter, who is a babbling idiot from CNN. That's my opinion as an American with First Amendment rights. Just moments after posting that tweet, McLaughlin says Twitter notified him his account was being blocked for violating the company's rules against abuse and harassment. Nothing I said there was abusive. It was, there was no violence. There was nothing that would have constituted it. McLaughlin says he wears the 12 hour suspension as a badge of courage, joining the ranks of Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, Roger Stone, and more than 360,000 others who have been silenced by Twitter. If you're threatening violence, uh, you know, harm, anything like that, any terroristic threat. I mean, the Taliban doesn't get banned on Twitter, but Donald Trump does. People have to wake up to what's going on in this country. This is serious stuff. And somebody saying something harsh to a journalist is a lot less important than the protection of a God-given constitutional right. McLaughlin concedes there is a difference between a tech giant and the government setting free speech standards, but there's also a distinction. That's sort of a canard to say, well, it's a private company, they can do what they want. I, you know, I, I can see that point. However, if you're going to do that, have a level playing field for everybody. But they're not having a level playing field. So it's a private company that is picking and choosing who they choose to censor. And that's wrong. Uh, it's shameful to see this happening in America today. And it's especially shameful to see it two days after 9-11. It, it, it's, it's unbelievable to me. And McLaughlin says he'd like to see Congress pick up the ball here and possibly establish meaningful oversight of large tech companies or perhaps break up the company.